Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna start getting into the interactive part of this, of the whole DOM modification thing. Up until now, we've been putting all of our stuff directly into the console, which isn't really a very user-friendly experience. So this time, we're going to look into events and what events are and how we can tie code to our events. Examples of events, DOM events specifically, are things like moving the mouse, clicking the mouse. I have a silent mouse, so it might be hard for you to hear, but I promise I'm clicking the mouse. Hovering over an element is a DOM event. Um, pressing or releasing a key on the keyboard. So if I push the up or down arrows, by default, it'll scroll the page up and down, but you can change that. If I hit space, by default, it'll scroll down, but again, you can change that. You can change all of that. If you copy text to the clipboard, so if I highlight this and copy it, that is a DOM action. You can set something so that whenever someone copies text, it does something. Um, scrolling is an action. Form events, like submitting or entering or leaving a field are events. Um, the browser losing internet connection is an event. If you resize your window, that's an event. So if I make this shorter, that's a DOM event. There's a ton of them out there. And in fact, let's go ahead and look at the reference. There's a bunch of them. Most common categories, but again, this is not all of them. Oh, blah, 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 all these different events. Mouse events, drag and drop events, media events, like when if a video starts playing or something. Progress events, you got storage, you got update, you got so many stinking events that you can tie code to. It's amazing. It's, it's super cool. Most of these, just like all the rest of this reference stuff, you're not going to use. You're probably never going to use 90% of these, but they're there if you need them. Don't sit down and try and memorize all this mess. You're going to memorize them just through use, the most important ones, and the rest of them you can look up. Please don't try and memorize all this crap. So the way that events work is a little bit different than you might initially think. You don't just say, on click, do this. You have to add what's called an event listener to an element. What that does is that tells that element, hey, listen for when this event happens, and when it does, run this code. For example, you might listen for the user to scroll down the page. If the user scrolls to the bottom of the page, do something. This is used all the time in websites now to load more content, like Facebook or Pinterest or whatever. When you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it then queries the API for more content and then loads that content on the bottom so that you never have to go to like page two, page three. It just keeps loading more stuff and it will infinitely scroll. Listen for the mouse to be moved inside of a div. So if I move this mouse over here or over here or over here, you could add event listeners to these images or whatever. And if I mouse over it, you could change the image to something or you could make it bigger or you could play a sound or you could do anything that you can figure out how to do with JavaScript. You can run with an event. You could listen for the user to double click on an image. If I double click on it, do something. Save the image to my computer, set it on fire. I don't know, whatever you want to do. So that's, that's how events work kind of in the high overview. So how do we use them? How do we add these event listeners? Well, first you have to select your element just like you always do, and then you add an event listener to it. So let's just select this title right here, document dot query selector h1 and I know it's that one right there and we are going to add event listener the e n e r add event listener now this takes two arguments it takes the type of event listener and then it takes a function to call it's called a callback function that's what that's called so the type might be click and then you add your function this is a perfect use case for an arrow function and you might um, just console.log clicked. Now right now, when I click on here, oh look, it's logging to the console. You can see over here on the side that it is doing it over and over again, even though it's the same. So every time I click on that, it's logging it to the console. That is an example of an event listener. You can do it with other things, like instead of the H1, let's get the first LI. And then, let's see, dot add event listener. And we want, I don't know, what do you want to do? Mouse over? On mouse over, call this function. Console.log. You moused over my li. And now every time I mouse over it, boom, 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 the limits are just your imagination. Let's change this. Let's change my awesome paragraph, and instead of saying that, let's update it. 
So document dot query selector is a p tag dot add event listener and whatever I click on it, I want to change the text. And let's document dot query selector. What do we want to change the text? Do we want to change the text of that paragraph? No, let's change the text of the title. Just to kind of demonstrate that we can dot text content equals you clicked on my paragraph so if I click here nothing nothing happens nothing's going on I can still mouse over this and you can see it's working but if I click on the paragraph boom I updated my website based on something I did this is where it really starts to get cool note that you can add multiple event listeners to the same element so you can do that as many times as you want they're going to run in the order that you add them. So if you add two um, click listeners to that, or you add two mouse overs or whatever, so the H1 currently has a click listener on it, and it will con it console.logs clicked whenever I do it. So click, 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 click. So let's add another one. Document.query selector. You know, for as much time as I spend typing, you think I'd be better at it. H1. Dot add event listener click because it'll be the same thing and then we're going to um, console oops console.log this is the second event listener now I have two if I click on it you'll see they both in that order the first one you added is triggered first the second one you added is then triggered and again, you can have as many as you want on there. Now I've refreshed the page, and all of my click listeners are gone, because remember, whenever you do JavaScript in the console, it's not preserved to the ref to the refresh your page. Also note that event listeners were f will fire on child elements. Whenever an event listener is actually called, whenever it triggers, we call that firing. Whenever the event listener fires is what is what the kind of the term is for that. Let's say I added a click listener to this list. So document dot get. Oops, I don't have an ID on there. Query selector is going to be an ordered list. Dot add event listener. Click. Click the OL. So whenever I click on this OL, it fires. But it also fires on all of these children. Any of the children elements I click, it still fires. So note that, that they propagate down. because The reason for that is that this OL takes up the entirety of that space. So anytime you click on any of that stuff, all the children inside it, you're also clicking on the OL. So just keep that in mind. And one more thing to note, and I've been doing this wrong through this entire video on purpose because I wanted to highlight it, you don't want to use arrow functions for click listeners. The reason for this is because it does not keep the correct this binding. If you use the traditional function declaration where you do function like that, it will preserve the correct this binding where this will refer to whatever you click on. If you use arrow functions, this will refer to the window object, which represents the window in the tab and it's, it's a little bit more complex. Don't worry about that. Basically, don't use arrow functions for click listeners, for any type of event listeners, because it will break this binding. So let's give a demonstration of that. Document dot query selector. Let's just do the p tag again. Dot add event listener, whenever it's clicked. Let's do an error function first. So console dot log this. I click on this, boom, it returns the window. It returns the window object. Instead, let's refresh the page. Instead, if we use the old function declaration, and now I click on this, it returns that p tag. That's very, very important because sometimes you might want to take a click listener or a function and apply it to a bunch of different things. So that way you just write your function once and then have it applied to all the different ones. So let's say const make red equals 
function this dot style dot background color equals red. And now I can add an event listener to that paragraph. Let's go back up to it. There it is. And instead of this um, anonymous function, we're just going to put in make red. So now if I click on this p tag, it changes the background color to red. Notice that it also still did that old event listener. But I could also apply that to a bunch of different stuff to my h1. I could apply it to my the first li. So now, click this, click that. So now by doing that and preserving the correct this binding, I'm able to reuse this code. If instead, let's refresh our page, if instead const make red equals an arrow function, this dot style dot background color equals red. And now we use this function, you're going to see it's going to act a lot differently. Let's go back and get our document query selector h1, make red. If I click on it, error, this dot style is undefined. What? It's because the window does not have a style property. It's trying to apply this to the window, but there's not a style to the window. So that's why you should always use old school functions, traditional function declaration for event listeners. Even if you're not going to use this, it's just a good habit to get into so that you don't accidentally run into those bugs. For event listeners, always use the old school function declaration. One trick you might want to do is like, for example, if we wanted to add an event listener to each of these four nested LIs, that would get really annoying to have to select each one individually and then add an event listener to it. So instead, we can use a loop. So let's just do a for loop. Let's just go ahead and const items equals document.query selector all. We want all LIs. If we look at items, you can see it's got a list. One, two, three, four items. So for let i equal zero, i less than items dot length, i plus plus, inside of here, we're going to add our event listener. So items i dot add event listener on a click. We're going to do a function, oops, t-i-o-n, we're going to do a function in which I, we can set the, the color to red, I guess. This dot style dot color equals red. I forgot something somewhere. Let's see. Oops, forgot my closing parentheses right there. So now that is set, and if I click, boom, that's red, boom, that's red, that's red, and that's red. So I can very quickly and easily add the same event listeners to each one and have it only apply to that one by using this. Because remember, this, when you're using the function, applies to that element, only that single element. Another thing to note is that you can use a for each loop, um, items.forEach. You can use this to do stuff, but it gets a little bit tricky. Um, especially when you're using this and when you're, you're doing a callback inside of a callback inside of a call, it can get a little tricky. If that's something you want to investigate, and I recommend you do eventually, look at the MDN docs for it, but we're not going to cover the, the for each in that context in this course. In this video, we talked about DOM events. And there's a ton of different DOM events that you can use to trigger code, because that's really all events do is they let you run functions whenever the user does something. And you can do whatever you want inside those functions. So we talked about how you can add event listeners to different elements. And then we talked about a few caveats with those event listeners, such as only using the traditional function declaration and things, and how you can loop through child elements to add event listeners to each one. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Thanks.